Hello and welcome to a series of WIPA short interviews with representatives of investment promotion agencies. My name is Boštian Skalar and I'm the Executive Director of World Association of Investment Promotion Agencies, WIPA. The purpose of these interviews is to get an overview how IPAs all around the world are responding to COVID-19 crisis, what measures they are taking, and also especially what actions they are planning for the post-COVID-19 era. And it's my sincere pleasure to have with me today Mr. Namori Kamara, Director General of APIP Guinea. So this is the National Investment Promotion Agency of Guinea. So hello, Mr. Kamara. I would uh, ask you the first question. So what's the current situation in Guinea and what measures are being taken to alleviate the impact of COVID-19 on the economy, especially, of course, from governmental perspective and on the other hand on from IPA perspective so from your agency's perspective and I, I'm aware and I heard that uh, numbers are luckily not so um, so bad in Guinea but I would like to hear your views uh, on this thank you please go ahead floor is yours thank you thank you very much sir uh, for this uh, as you mentioned uh, uh, sharing uh, idea and view times uh, as, uh, as you may know, this pandemic has uh, uh, completely changed uh, the game uh, worldwide. And Guinea, of course, was not, uh, uh, was not uh, immune to these situations. Uh, currently, uh, uh, health-wise, uh, health uh, we've been affected. We have many cases as well, and, uh, but not as much as affected by other countries. Uh, the level, if you take the ranking of Guinea in Africa in terms of uh, infections, and we are, I think, uh, ranking fifth, but in terms of lethality or death rates, uh, I think the death rate today is probably one of the lowest. Uh, but uh, uh, when uh, I think the pandemic started, a few measures were taken by the government. Uh, these measures are the same measures uh, which was taken worldwide. Uh, there were non-economical non measures, such as you know, uh, curfew, restrictions, and uh, movement on people, uh, on goods, and uh, also uh, the, the, in, the, in the long line in April, for example, you know, wearing face masks was uh, mandatory. So I think everything that you, all the measures that uh, you will see elsewhere in other countries in terms of health, where exactly the same thing that we uh, we do, but probably the slight differences is uh, when we, we didn't go into a complete lockdown, as you know, uh, in Africa it's very difficult to do a complete lockdown. We, you know, we have kind of a curfew and kind of containment measures uh, because you know it's virtually uh, or uh, you know, in reality it's not possible to lock down the country. Um, but uh, in the meantime as well, I think uh, around uh, April time, if uh, I think it was around April time, uh, the government really, really uh, it took some measures to uh, support and help businesses uh, in Guinea. Mm -hmm. Put outline and put together a response plan. You know, the same plan that you will see uh, in other countries and that plan to support small and medium businesses was around 360 million. And uh, 360 million, we have also a fiscal package. I think people tend, when I interact sometimes with businesses, they tend to forget that, that during this period, government, it's, uh, as you know, all the people around the world, the government are really in debt because they are, you know, uh, uh, they are, uh, they are, I would say they are putting together a kind of fiscal, uh, fiscal uh, amnesty. And those fiscal amnesty will create deficits in, uh, in the government budget. So there is a huge constraint on the public uh, government revenue because of all, of all this. And as today, for example, in local money, I can say that uh, since uh, two, three months ago, the government has provided around 350 billion in terms of fiscal package. That's the fiscal package. Uh, 
Uh, in addition to the fiscal package, we didn't have in Guinea uh, an investment and a guarantee fund for smaller businesses. Uh, so we, I think this, as, as uh, people uh, you know, say, it's, uh, it's this kind of crisis accelerates other things as well. So it was an opportunity to have challenges, but these challenges also bring opportunities uh, to, 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 to bring things that normally should be out, outlined or in reality in Guinea. So we put uh, together an investment, um, a guarantee fund, and also a credit line facility uh, for small and medium businesses. So this is uh, uh, ongoing, and uh, APIP was really, really uh, instrumental at the heart of all these measures. So we didn't, unlike other agency, so they were consulted by the government and uh, measures really were at the heart of implementing them. So these are, the, in general, are some of the measures that we take. So there is a fiscal package, of course, for small and middle, like uh, 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 VAT exemptions, uh, like waiving taxes or delaying referral taxes, or, you know, uh, also, uh, you know, putting together kind of uh, credit line for, uh, for companies. But this has not started yet. So I think what companies as small business need right now in Guinea is putting the money into a new money into the system. But that will start very soon. I, I guess you are focusing on the uh, existing investors, most possibly uh, because they are the ones who are there and they are in difficulties. I presume more or less all these measures are to help uh, to help them as well, right? I mean. I, I, I believe you would agree with me that you are um, putting a lot of attention to aftercare as well, because the existing ones at least uh, are there. Uh, we are all aware that the new ones most possibly would not uh, that easily come again, at least for some time until the situation gets better. So I would like to hear as well your opinion as a leader of an IPA. How do you think the field of investment promotion will be shaped in the future? How will be this new normal that we spoke before? And do you think that IPAs will need to adjust uh, the strategies? And uh, I don't know, this adjustment might be used as a chance rather than a challenge. Um, please. I agree with you. And I cannot agree with you uh, more. I was not part, so since one and a half year ago, I was working in absolutely different industry. And I remember when I started here in Guinea, there was kind of an in, in and challenges on an IPA focusing on local businesses. So even some of my advisors was telling me, you should not focus on local businesses. But luckily, I think since last year, we were a little bit ahead of the game. And so we knew in Guinea, uh, we had kind of situation like Ebola at the time in, 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 uh, in, uh, in 2016. So we knew that crisis, it's not different from this crisis as well, that you have to uh, redefine your strategy. And that's exactly that we did. So we put an emphasis on the aftercare. We strengthened a department called aftercare departments. Oh. And, uh, and we started really, you know, focusing on uh, small and, uh, and local business. Because if you look at this, the, the, uh, the, the, if you look at, for example, FDI uh, inflow in Guinea, uh, two or three years ago, I think it's all, it was around 470 million. So 470 million, 90% of FDI coming to Guinea come, came from, come from uh, mining sectors. So we rely heavily on mining. So we have to diversify and we have to put and there's money, money in the local businesses. So we put an emphasis in on, uh, on aftercare, which was, we've done. We restructure, reorganize as well, uh, the investment, promo uh, investment promotion department. I think we started doing this, all these the things when at the right beginning when the crisis happened. So because I, we know, as you mentioned, the FDI dropped. The drop was around 40, you know, around 40%. And 90, 90 billion dollars was, was uh, taken out of the emerging markets. So we have to, uh, you know, build the ecosystem internally. And we, for example, uh, have partnership with uh, uh, institution like uh, financial institution to help local business in action. Uh -huh. 
finance. So we started all these things last year, but all these things reinforce us to accelerate, to, you know, to put things, uh, emphasis in, uh, on aftercares, and, uh, and that's exactly that we will do. So as you know, <clears throat> investment bringing, attracting investment, which is what our core activity, will be really, really difficult moving forward. Yes. Uh, competition will be, it will be competition between, uh, let's say you are in, you are in uh, uh, I don't know if you are tur tur uh, you, you, you Turk, but in, for example, I have few uh, trade mission canceled this year. Last year I had a uh, trade mission from Turkish. Uh, uh, yeah, normally we had, uh, uh, in this year, if it was not the pandemic, uh, we, we, we are supposed to have uh, many people from UK, trade mission from UK, uh, you know, from China. So all these things will be cancelled. And all mm -hmm. these will fight also to have the F FDA. They also will fight to protect their own markets. So what to do? Of course. That's why you have to rely because it will be difficult, you know, to get that. And the aftercare, that will be key, but we should not also take an eye on attracting because the crisis, I think, will at some point go away anyway. Uh, one question, short uh, sub question: uh, Which sectors do you think in the future uh, would be, let's say, more um, attractive uh, for investors, especially for Guinea? You know, there are discussions of more, uh, let's say, high tech sectors, artificial intelligence, and this. How how is in Guinea this situation? Because I'm sure the health sector didn't drop so much uh, because health sector was more than needed, but. Uh, and maybe this um, IT sector didn't drop much, but I'm sure um, any energy sector related or this kind of drop. So do you see any sectors that might become like emerging, they, that might emerge uh, post COVID? Okay, first of all, I think if you look at the situation overall, it's, it's not really as bad in Guinea as we may think. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know, based on the latest IMF forecast, even next year, uh, most of the country, developing country, even the OECD country, will be in, technically in recessions. But like, luckily, Guinea will not be in recession. Uh, I think we still forecast, we've still been forecast around 5 6%. So there will be a drop in GDP forecast anyway, but technically, we won't be uh, badly affected. And the mining sectors as well, uh, you know, still will continue. I'm amazed to see that some investment are still going on. You know, we... Uh, uh, last last uh, last week, uh, you know, there was a deal on the pipeline, one of the biggest uh, mining deal in the world, 40 billion. So I was not mm. that, that this deal didn't deal a Simandu. So that's mean there is a confidence. But because you cannot compare, you, uh, we have our own reality, we have our own situation. So some of these sectors probably, uh, you know, let's say energy, we st will still will need energy. Sure. It's a structure is needed. There's a huge gap in infrastructure in Guinea. Uh, ICT was one of our key sectors. I think mm -hmm. ICT will also probably be predominant compared to the other sectors. Because now everybody believes that, you know, institution, pu pu public institution, private institution, you have to go digital. You know, you have to go digital. Even us, we go in digital. So, you know, we went digital already. Uh, some of the webinar work that we did, uh, you know, we had you know, 400 people. I will never thought that, you know, in Guinea, uh, we will do a webinar, uh, two, two hours without, you know, breaking down in, in things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, going digital, governments are also going digital. Uh, some of these uh, e-meetings are, you know, going, taking place, uh, uh, you know, among the governments, uh, public services, we will never thought about that. So I think ICT and digital will be, you know, increasing. But for us in Guinea, it was already a priority. So it, I oh, think good. that will be, that will accelerate, it will accelerate. And the health was also, I think everything is a priority here. That's why when you read uh, the situation, country differ from countries. So it will, it will have all these sectors we identify, we will have accelerators on their sectors, but there will still be a priority for us. Uh, so you, you gave me a good, let's say, initiative when you are saying that it was a priority. So obviously what I hear from your words is the government and as well uh, APIP Guinea, so the agency reacted very proactively and were actually already applying this digitalization. 
And um, uh, obviously, as I see from your words, is that you are very much uh, working in line with other institutions as well in the country. And my last question would be, um, we are already uh, in the same page that IPAs are more than uh, relevant, uh, they are relevant more than ever. And uh, I would like to hear from your side, how is the cooperation with other institutions? How do you think this is relevant? Not only uh, outside, let's say you are in touch with WIPA, you are in touch with OECD, or, I mean with, with big institutions, World Bank, but uh, also institutions uh, within your government. So how is about the trust, about the cooperation, about the, let's say, concerted action that you can assist uh, your government and the existing investors to overcome this situation? Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's more than relevant nowadays that IPA and our people, you know, uh, continue to be uh, providing information to governments. Uh, if you look at the situation today, uh, uh, institutions, including as a government and private institutions, are looking towards a people like a center of information. So, uh, 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 last week, we had a central bank that came to us, which is not part of our missions. They came to us to help them reach out to the private sectors because they know that we can pass easily to the private sectors. I'll give you another example. We have the LFX sector, for example. We put together, and uh, not us, there is uh, an institution here uh, uh, in charge of migrations with the Ministry of Health. Uh, mm -hmm set up an alliance to help, you know, to bring private sectors to fund, you know, uh, all these crisis, health crises. So even for that as well, they have to look, to look towards a peak. But if you look at, and that's, that's a very good question, it, it becomes sometimes uh, uh, a little bit tensious with the other sectors because they don't understand why, you know, as an IPA, we are all over the place, but we are all over the place because this is also our mandate. You know, even health exactly. has an, an impact on investment, everything, education. So I think the position that we have today, we have a trusted position, to be honest, before, but that trusted position has reinforced as well. And some of these uh, response plans that the government has put in place, it will be mandatory, even if uh, other uh, institution, as you mentioned, so cooperation between institutions is key. We are already cooperating with all these institutions. But they will have to, you know, for example, rely on uh, an IPA to understand the market, to understand, for example, okay. the, formality, the formalizations. So all these things is extremely important. And it becomes really relevant that an, as a, a leader of an IPA, we think outside the box. We should not think only as, you know, an investment promotion agency attracting FDI. I think this is a narrow-minded view. Exactly. Of, in you fact, need to see bigger picture. Pardon? You need uh, to see bigger picture. Yeah. You need to see bigger picture. You need to see bigger picture. But it's a reality. It's not me. It's because the world has changed. It's because I can't travel as much as you know. I can't bring people as much. So I have to think out of the box and and do something else. So uh, I think we are really going towards the the the. the the right direction, for example, this week uh, on Friday, we'll have, uh, we'll have um, an event, an e-event, with all the uh, managing director of the banks, uh, the central banks, to talk about uh, uh, how to uh, improve climate, uh, business climate as well. And uh, we have a lot of exchanges with uh, the fiscal department here. Yeah. Uh, I think if I can, to be honest, if I can uh, position in addition to our mission, uh, APIP as a center where you look into to get information, mm -hmm. information on businesses, and for that, you need collaboration with all these institutions. Exactly. See what I mean? Not only uh, position myself as, uh, you know, uh, attracting investors and that's it, but as, a, as an, a, a center where you can, you know, get everything to enable you to, uh, you know, to do your business better. And then as well to make a policy advocacy back to government. Exactly. exactly. Hearing from the market and then bringing the information towards government as well, of course.
Exactly, exactly. In terms of policy advocacy, that's exactly okay. Uh, yes. and, and, and you you mentioned policy. I think one of the key differentiator, keys, I will say, key setting points, because IPAs are also competing. You know that. Huh? Cool. Uh, maybe competing with, you know, with Turkey, Shedding. One of our the key differentiators will be policy. One policy of the key advocacy. differentiators to attract more FDI will be, for example, uh, uh, I think a huge improvement in government policy, in fiscal policy, and also fighting corruption, for example. Uh, uh, because, uh, as you know, investors will be really picky. They won't, you know, they won't invest easily in countries. They will probably, foreign investors will probably prefer to invest closer to their markets. Exactly. Far, 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 uh, going further. And as you know, you have so many uh, relocation, uh, repatriation of companies, uh, you know, protection, uh, uh, protectionism ideas. As you know, that's before the pandemic it started by, uh, you know, Correct. China and US, uh, you know, protecting the market. Now the uh, European Union also is protecting. So all these single countries are protecting themselves. But we, we cannot have the luxury to protect our market in that way because we need investors. But the things that we can do is to improve our policy. And that also as an IPA, I think that should be a constant role mission of the IPA moving forward. Uh, in addition to that, the, the IPA has to go really digital, really digital. Because I don't still believe that in the next six months, even in the next 12 months, that the new normal will go away. Exactly. I think, in fact, you and I, we know that when is the new normal, it becomes not the normal, and it stays. So exactly. people will travel that much. I don't think people will, uh, uh, investment will come as easily. So digitalization, uh, for example, why not do a virtual, uh, uh, a virtual uh, sightseeing of the investors, for example? Or why not do virtual events of you know Turkish investors in Guinea instead of coming over here? Uh, why not, for example, uh, completely if we can uh, 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 be able to reach out to investors, local investors and foreign investor in a digital way, and that's possible because they've already embraced this kind of uh, attitude and culture. Can can't agree more with you, actually. Uh, I heard a lot of good insights and I'm sure the listeners will be uh, more than happy to, to hear what you've been saying. Uh, I would like to really thank you for your time and sharing, uh, let's say, your experience from your country to other uh, global community of FDI. Um, and we are always here to assist you. And I would like also to thank um, to all the audience and to listeners for listening to us and to watching our uh, video interviews. Uh, I would like to encourage you to follow us, of course, on our social media as well, visiting our webpage, vipa.org, where we can always share and you can find lots of relevant information, how the peer colleague IPAs are responding to challenges, uh, what they are doing, what measures they are taking. And we encourage you to please stay tuned for another set of interviews, another initiatives that Viper is following. So again, uh, Mr. Kamara, thank you very much. It was really my pleasure to host you. And uh, what is my last message is to stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank, thank you as well. And stay safe over there. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah.